Hi ladies, happy 4th of July. So I was feeling pumped on doing jewelry and I'm like, let's dive on the camera and let's just show everybody what's on my mind and let's do it together. So we are going to be making these bit of bling bracelets. I made these years ago and I thought that I would just go ahead and bring it back again and just re, you know, revamp it. So absolutely love making these. They are so flipping fun and adorable. And it's a bit of bling because it's just a bit in the middle. That's it. You don't have to worry about doing it all the way around. And honestly, to be completely honest, this is probably not considered a bit of bling, but in my mind, I have to have more than just a little bit. See, look at that. <laughs> but these are all tiny beads. We're talking about like, this is a two millimeter bead, three millimeter bead. You know, this right here is a six millimeter bead. So they're all smaller beads, except for the focal point bead. That's like normally about an eight or a 10 millimeter bead. And um, so these are the bracelets. We're gonna make two of them together. And then what I have right here are these, I'm gonna show you how it looks stacked, okay? Because I love stacked bracelets. These right here are stretchy bracelets that I made. They're metal beads. And I purchased these from um, Joann's um, that carries the Hildy and Joe brand. And they sell these. So when you buy a pack, it comes with the large and the small one. So like for instance, I'm gonna show you. So let's say I wanna add that one. Do this one. Do the small one, and let's go ahead and add this one, this one, this one, this one. Bam, there's my stack. Okay, so this is how it looks all the way around. Look how fun that looks. It's so pretty. Seven bracelets to make this stack, and I'm living for it absolutely gorgeous all right and then here's like the two extras so we're going to go ahead and make i already have preset one here one here and this is what you're going to want to do we'll just go ahead and we'll leave these right here for you to take a sneaky peeky at and then i'll just keep this stack on it's probably gonna be the one i wear for today so anywho what you're gonna need memory wire you can get this from anywhere michael's joanne's hobby lobby you're gonna need tube cording this tube cording you can get at Michael's and Hobby Lobby. I purchased this at Hobby Lobby. And this is in the kids section where they sell beads, the kids beads. And um, you wanna make sure you get this cording because there is a hole in the middle and that's the one we're using, okay? They do have this in clear. Some of them, they can find it in glitter. I prefer to stick with just the black, okay? Then you're gonna need memory wire cutters. Do not use your flush cutters, which are these, okay? You use these on cutting memory wire. These are going to get ruined. These are not meant for that. You would want to, these are meant for like your head pins and eye pins to cut. So don't destroy these. Use your memory wire cutters, okay? And then I'm always using these three staple pieces right here, which are my needle nose, round, my needle round nose, and my flat nose. And these are my like my ugly ones, but I keep these in my to-go box. I have a pink tackle box that you can buy from joannes.com. And it is the flipping cutest tackle box ever. And I use it for my beading. So like, if I'm on the go and I want to just go hang out at the beach and just, you know, be by myself, park my car, I'll take my thing. And it has everything in it. These are the tools I take with me. When I'm normally home, I use my fancy one that I showed you guys where it has like the, you know, the seven or eight tools and it's in the wooden carrier. This is what I just toss in my box and I use. So I'm gonna put that back in when I'm done. I just decided to jump on here and make these because it's been a while since I've made these bracelets. I'm like, let's just jump on camera and let me show the girls, you know, so that you guys can give it a whirl. Okay, so when it's on its coil, I use a coil and a half, okay? So here's your end piece. You're gonna wrap, it's gonna go all the way around and then you're gonna have your second half. So you'll see right here where it ends is one and where this ends back here, it's gonna be one coil and one half, okay? It should go all the way around once and then halfway, okay? So we're gonna get our wire cutters, okay? So now you can see it's one and a half. We will be cutting some of it off like that, but I always like to start at one coil and a half and work from there, okay? So that's one, so let's cut one more because we're doing two. Okay, coil 
coil and a half. Now we're gonna go ahead and snip off the second one and move that to the side. So we have that one ready. All right. Then we're automatically gonna grab this and we're gonna do the end and make the circle at the end, okay? So you're gonna get your round needle nose. I always take it to about a quarter of a way through because as you go higher, your the barrel, you see it gets thicker, so that means that your whole your circle is gonna be bigger if you go up there. Okay, so I normally tend to go a quarter of the ways up. That's kind of like always my focal point. My right hand is doing the work. It's resting on my left thumb. I turn it all the way to where I can. I don't take it out. Open it a little bit. See, nope, I need to hold on to it again and keep turning to where it turns all the way and touches the metal, okay? So you see that that's what's happening. Don't take it out. Turn it towards you, to where it's leveled. And now we're gonna bend it towards ourself. Okay, to where it kind of makes like that question mark type of look. So it's still open a little bit and we're okay with that. We are going to go ahead and close it off. Hold on. There. Make sure the metal is touching the metal. Okay, perfection. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and this is how I do mine, okay guys? To guesstimate on how to do your tubing, You'll see on this bracelet, always add something at the very end right here to stop the tubing from, it'll split on this one once you wear it. This is kind of what stops the tubing. If you don't add that, it'll end up splitting on this end piece. So always add something, whether it's a, me, a metal finding or a bead of some sort, okay? And it's a small one, don't go too ham and add big ones. You wanna keep this bracelet light, okay? That's, you gotta always remember that, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add little tiny metal bead findings. So we're gonna add the one because I know I'm gonna have to have that at the end, okay? Then I'm gonna do the pattern that I wanna go with. Okay, so we're gonna go here, here, and Again, this is just to measure. Um, I picked the wrong bead cap for this one, didn't I? No, it's right, okay. Just to measure how much cording we're gonna cut. This isn't what's gonna, it's not gonna stay like this. Okay. And you wanna make sure that all of your beads are going in the direction you want them to. So you'll see right here. This is where I'm going at. You wanna make sure all your bead caps are facing the right way, that you got the beads in the right spots. Because once you finish this off and you realize, oh my gosh, the beads are turned around or I'm missing a daisy spacer, it's too late. You gotta cut this off and redo a new coil, okay? So we're gonna push that all the way to the end, okay? So now we have the, the ending where I want and then I know that I'm gonna put a cording in between these two. Now I need to add another end piece for the opposite side, okay? All right, now we're gonna grab the cording, all right? And what I do is I pretty much just, I'll butt it up to right where the bead is. And then I'm just holding it and kind of like wrapping it with my hand just on top, just to get an idea. Okay. Of how much cording I'm gonna actually need. Okay, leaving a little bit of space here because you know you're gonna turn that, right? Where's my scissors? And I love my Timmy scissors, guys. These guys, are, these right here are amazing. I have so many of his scissors, love his scissors. All right, so now we have our coil piece. You're gonna cut some of this. Um, when, you, when you see that I put this on here, you're gonna see I'm gonna have to cut some off because it's gonna be too long. But that's how I guesstimate, okay? Then we're gonna cut this directly in half because you need two of these. All right, and then what I do, 
So I grab this end, all right, and I start sliding this one on. Because like I said, there's a hole in this coil, in this um, tubing. See, when the kids use this, they use it to put the pony beads over this. They don't use it for the, the hole that's in there. Okay, so then we're gonna grab the other one we're going to go ahead and okay so you see I only have it's only coming out a little bit I need it to be more so that tells me I got to cut it a little bit more this is where I guesstimate always cut less before you cut more and when you're guesstimating okay that's my guesstimate let's see how I did and we're going to go back on here again all the only space you want to have left at the very end is just enough to turn because we already factored in all the space we need for the beads. Okay. All right. Okay. So I have a little bit right here, which is perfect. I know I'm gonna have to cut off just a smidge and, um, and that's okay. I'm okay with that. So see, that's how you do it. So now we are going to go ahead and take this off and now we're gonna actually put it together, okay? All right, and then we're gonna take off all the beads except for the one end piece, okay? That you need to stop the tubing. Okay. Keep this so it doesn't mess up my pattern too much. All right. I'm gonna put the tube on now. All right. Now we're gonna go ahead and start with the actual layout of how I want my beads to look. Make sure that you are paying attention to the way your beads are facing to make sure you've got the beads on the right way. This is your last chance to make sure, oops, that you are putting this on correctly, okay? And I'm using all glass beads. You can use acrylic beads if that's what you wanna do. Just make sure your bracelet is light you don't want it to be heavy beads, large beads. You wanna use your smaller beads on this one right here because it will fall off. It won't stay on your wrist if you make it too heavy. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna check it. Do we have all of the spacers in the way I want, the right size beads? Are the bead caps facing the right way against the bead? Do I pick the right bead caps? This is the last stop, guys. Okay, so now we're gonna put on the next tubing that is gonna go on the other side. Okay, now we're gonna put on our last bead that's gonna stop the, um, oops. So you'll see how it stops the cording, okay? So now I know I'm gonna to need to cut off some of this because that's too much left over. Guesstimate of how I know how much I'm gonna actually need to make the loop. Okay. Let me see if I can get it there. I think I, there we go. Okay, we're gonna grab our round needle nose. We're gonna go like a quarter of the way down Make sure it's flush to where it's not sticking up. Right hand turns and does the work while it pushes against your thumb. Don't take it out. Look, we see we still, it's not flush. So we're gonna turn it again to where it's touching and it is. Now we're gonna still keep it in, close it down. Now we're gonna turn, turn it towards us, okay? And then there's your perfect little question mark loop. If it's opened a little bit right there, that's okay. You just use your actual um, needle nose pliers and close it up a smidge to where it's metal to metal. And look at that, guys. That's it. That's all. That's all you're doing. All right, now we're going to do the little dangles. 
Again, keep your dangles very simple, very light. The whole beauty, these are one inch head pins. I do not use um, eye pins on when I'm hanging dangles. I don't like to do that because it looks unfinished. It looks like you should be hanging something from it. So I always use the um, head pins, not the eye pins. Eye pins are with a loop that look like this. All right, so these are one inch. We're gonna cut off most of it anyway. <laughs> Um, and this is where we can use our flush cutters. This is all guesstimating, guys. It's very difficult to teach you how much you should know to cut. I kind of always just push it up against my finger. I look at it and I'm thinking, okay, I already know. I'm gonna, that's the loop size I need. Okay. Take it about a quarter up. It's, it's always my staple is going a quarter way up every time I do my loops. Okay. Turn it back. Okay, so it looks like that. And then we're gonna open this up a smidge so that we can add it onto the end of this. I'm gonna grab our needle nose and now we're gonna close it off. Make sure those are there. So you have just a little dangle that's just adorable. All right, let's do this again, more flesh cutters. Okay. Right hand does the work, guys. Turn it towards, look up. Nope, it's not touching. Keep pushing until it touches. Then you keep it in there, close it to where it's leveled flat like this then you're turning it towards yourself. You see that it's still open. That's perfect because I want to be able to hook it on to this end piece here. The bracelet, like I mentioned a few times, I just want to make sure I'm enforcing it, not sounding like a broken record. You want it to be light. You do not want this to be a heavy bracelet. It should be very, very light. So see, look at how fun that is. And this is perfect because I have a super bony wrist. And even if you don't, let's say you have a wrist that's bigger, this is perfect because it's memory wire. It's gonna hug it. So look, guys, look how fun this is. Love it, love it, love it. Stop it. All right, let's do one more, guys. All right, we already pre-cut it because we did that in the beginning. So we're gonna go ahead. First thing we do is we do the loop. Memory wire is tougher and... Um, it's a little harder to do your loop as opposed to using the head pins and eye pins. Okay, but that's okay. Right-handed, so I'm gonna still push it against my finger. Look up, it's not touching the metal yet. Oh, now it's touching, we're not taking it out. I'm gonna close it because it's now leveled towards me. Now I'm gonna turn it towards me, okay? So it'll look like that. Then we're gonna grab our needle nose gonna oops now we're gonna close it together so now that the metal is touching each other okay we're gonna add our first bead okay that we want to stop it okay then we're gonna go ahead and start how we want the center of our bracelet to look oops Oh, geez, Louise, hold on, I just dropped. I'll just pick that one up later, I have some more right here. <laughs> so now I'm gonna start my pattern. Make sure you do your pattern first, how you want it to sit on your um, bracelet. These are glass crackle beads. Okay, I buy a lot of my beads from all over the place, guys, so I really can't tell you exact. Sometimes I can tell you exactly where they're from, but a lot of times I can't, but, um, a you know, I haven't gone to downtown LA in like a long time. So I'll go to Hobby Lobby and get beads um, or Michael's when they're having their super sales and I'll grab them there. All right. And then we're going to do this one. And these are like a baby blue crackle bead. All right. So that's how I want the center of mine to be. And these crackle beads are glass too. So I don't want to go too crazy and make it too heavy. So again, this is the end piece tubing would go there. This is my focal point in the middle. Now I got to add one more 
bead because this would be my end piece bead, right? Now we need to do the tubing. So we grab the tubing. And we're gonna just kind of like hold it around the actual wire so that we can guesstimate how much we need. It's gonna be too much. I'm just gonna tell you now, when you cut it like that, it is gonna show that it's too much and we would prefer to cut too much than too little. All right, so this is what I have. Automatically, we're gonna get it and we're gonna cut it in half. All right, now we're gonna slide on the tubing. And this is what's gonna tell us how much more we need to cut. Or unless you're lucky and you guesstimated correctly. I don't do that. <laughs> when I guesstimate on this, it, it's, it, it never does. I always have to cut, okay? All right, so we know that now we have See how there's only a little bit there? I need to cut more because I need to be able to make a loop. So that tells me when I cut it, I have to cut two. I can't just cut the one. They both have to be equal. Okay, so we're gonna take off the tubing. And this is where you guesstimate. Cut, when you do this part, cut less. Don't cut too much because then you gotta start all over, guys. All right, so I know I didn't need that much. Okay, so let's see, maybe that much. Let's see if I did good. And we're going to slide it back on. This is probably the only lengthy part of doing these is that guesstimate part. But other than that, guys, this is really a no-brainer. And, um, and they're fun. And they actually are pretty quick in comparison to a lot of the other jewelry I do. All right. Perfect. That works for me. So now let's get all the, the little tidbits out of the way. Now we're going to go ahead and actually build the bracelet. Super easy peasy, guys. All right. We're going to keep one bead on because it has to go at the very end. And then we're going to slide off the rest of them here. All right. So we have your one bead, tubing. Okay. And then we're going to start our pattern. Let's remove one of these because that's the end piece. And then we are now going to build it. I kept this one pretty simple. I didn't go, you know, like when um, Michael's, you buy their beads. I like to buy the ones that have like four strands on it. And it has like a two, three millimeter, five millimeter, eight millimeter. It has like four different sizes on it. I always get those ones because that's perfect for these type of bracelets. Um, because it's all the same color, but it's already now in different sizes for you. So that's like what I did on this white one. This was a four strand right here. So I loved it. I always grab those when they're on sale at Michael's. Get like a bang for your buck. Since Michael's is absolutely not great with their sales. So, all right, we have this one and then this one. All right, now we add on our next piece of tubing. slide that on now we're going to take this and add our bling at the very end we're going to grab our needle nose these mama jamas and we're going to close off the end wait do i need to cut a little bit yeah i think i need to cut a little bit okay let me cut a smidge because i know it's going to be too big for my loop Don't want that to fly in your eyeball, guys. It's no bueno. All right, let's push this back a little bit. Now we're gonna grab our needle nose, quarter of the way up towards flush. Right hand's doing all the work, guys, if you're right-handed. Metal touches metal, turn it back. Then we grab our needle nose flat ones and we close off the circle all right bada bing bada boom look at that 
So you wanna make sure before you close that final one off that this is all facing the right direction, that everything is in place. Because this is the part where you're like, oh my gosh, I messed it up. Well, cut it off and start over. All right, then we have our um, head pins that are flat. Now we're gonna hang our dangles. Something small, simple, cute, dainty. And we're gonna cut some of that off. I always guesstimate because this is a hard part to teach guys as far as how to guesstimate how much to actually cut off. There is really no actual measurement to teach you. This is like, it takes practice to figure out how to do that. So for me, when you're cutting something like this, cut less until you figure it out. Or you're gonna go through a lot of head pins. Okay, actually, I mean, yeah, these are head pins. I was gonna say, I think those are the other ones. So then you <clears throat> hook it on. Oops. And then we're going to go ahead and close it off to where the metal's touching the metal. Grab the next one. Put this on. Um, guesstimate. Go all the way up towards the bead. It's touching. Try it back. Open this up a little bit so we can put it on the loop. And there you go, guys. Easy, stinking peasy. So just little dangles. Use your little beads. Don't go heavy on these because you see the perfect thing about when it goes a coil and a half is because now you gave it more security on your wrist. So if you're moving it around a lot, it's not gonna fly off, okay? So just make sure you do that. And it's perfect for all size wrists, guys. See how it goes through here to here? And it's just pretty. So whether you have a super skinny wrist like myself or if you have a wrist that happens to be bigger, that is fine. Just make sure that you're looking on here. And if you have to, put it on your wrist, you know? If you have a wrist that's bigger, because these, and I do see that these sometimes, I'll see small ones like this one, where the diameter is smaller, and then I'll see ones that are bigger. So sometimes look at that and make sure when you buy these that you're getting the smaller one if you need it, and if you need the bigger one, get the bigger one. But it doesn't mean you can't use this if this is the only size you see. Yes, you still can use it. That just means you wanna probably cut more coil, oh, excuse me, more coil, maybe take it like almost two circles around, and then cut it if you happen to have a bigger wrist because it's easier to just cut off as you go, okay? This is pretty much staple for most size wrists, but not everybody has an itty bitty wrist and that's absolutely okay. Just cut more of this as opposed to a coil and a half, maybe cut a coil and three quarters just so that it'll sit on your wrist where it overlaps each other a nice good distance and not towards too tiny or else it won't stay on. Okay, so that's it guys. These are the Bit of Bling bracelets. I hope you have fun. I can't wait. Tag me on what you make, guys. I want to see because if you guys come up with something new, I want to know because I want to try it out too. I'm not going to wear this whole stack, guys. I'm going to take off of three of those. But yes, this is how pretty it looks. Give it a whirl. Have an amazing and super beyond blessed day with your family. And I will see you guys later. Bye.